Hey YouTube, Skipper T here. A couple weeks ago I shot a video on my new MTN Apollo 30 snowshoes. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go back, take a look at it, like it, subscribe, do whatever. Um, but when I sat down and started thinking about this and watching some other videos out on YouTube and stuff, I realized that carrying a, you know, a 30, 40 pound pack and wearing snowshoes is going to be somewhat labor intensive. Um, of course, trekking through the snow in any fashion is going to be labor intensive. So, what I discovered after I had seen these and a complement to the snowshoes is what's called a pulk sled. P-U-L-K sled. Move these out of the way here. So what I decided to do was do a little shopping around. I saw the various manufacturers of sleds and everything like that was out on Amazon and I came across the Terrain Sport Sled D54, which is just just basic utility sled that you see here. And I've decided to modify this a little bit. And what I've done is I've drilled some holes, added some hardware. I'll bring the camera in so you can see this up close a little bit. This sled is 54 inches long. It is 24 inches wide. It's 26 to the outside. Um, well, 24 to the outside, 22 to the inside. And it's approximately 11 inches deep. As you can see in the front here, it's got a nice slide, so hopefully it won't be snow plowing. It'll actually lift up and float over the snow. We won't know for sure until we get some snow and try it. It's currently the middle of September, so we don't have any snow yet, but better to be prepared than, you know, not. So anyway, I've made this as a complement to go with the snowshoes. That way I can, you know, put the snowshoes on, maybe carry a light pack with some clothes in it and such, but carry all my camping gear in here. You've seen my hot tent. Um, it's a 10 by 14 1970s tent that I put a snow, uh, or correction, that I put a uh, wood-burning stove in. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to carry it and the wood-burning stove and then any other supplies that I would need for a day or two out in the woods and just having some fun out in the snow. But anyway, what I'll do here, guys, is I will bring in the camera and we'll get a little close-up. I'll show you the modifications that I've made to the sled here. Very similar to everything else that you see out there. Now, I do have to give a couple of shout-outs to some, to some fellas out on YouTube. Um, Iowa, I.A. Woodsman, Iowa Woodsman. Um, he had a nice video out there on the sled that he made. His is much um, sh more shallow. doesn't quite come up as, as deep as this one. Yankee Prepper made a good video out there. Wah Hiker did one. Um, I've been a fan of his channel for a long time, as, long as, as well as everybody I'm going to mention here. And then there's Sugar, Sugar Marie, S-U-G-E-M-E-R-Y. I will put links down below so that you can go and see the sleds that these guys have created, which was somewhat the foundation for what I've decided to do. Um, I did watch a whole slew of them out there, so there were far more than those guys. I happen to like their particular one. Um, Shug especially, uh, he showed a skeg that he put on the bottom of the sled, and what that skeg then acts like, it's just like something on a water ski or, or anything like that. Um, and what it is, is it's a little fin that would come down. It would project out of the bottom of your sled, kind of in the middle. Or I've seen guys put two of them on there or just one in the center. What that helps with is then is if you're on an incline, instead of the, the sled just sliding out, that little skeg that sticks out two to three inches then allows that to, to get into the snow and kind of hold it on the same track you're on if you're on a on an incline, especially if you're going, you know, sideways across it. That just keeps that sled from spinning out and, you know, twisting twisting you, pointing you up the hill and the sled down the hill. I have not made that modification as I live in the flatlands in, in um, the Midwest of the United States. Shouldn't have a big call for it. There are some... I don't know, we'll just call them slight topographical features along the creek beds and in some of the um, woods that are around my area. If I deem it's necessary, I'll figure out a way, probably just drill two or three holes and bolt the whole thing onto the bottom. Anyway, these guys address those in those other videos, so take the time to watch those. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'll bring the camera in, I'll show you what I've done with this one. Stay with me. Okay guys, now we got her in a little tighter. What I've done is this is a 54 inch sled. So, and that's from the leading edge to the aft edge back here. So what I've done 
was I measured back a foot, a foot, a foot, and another foot in the back here, okay? Um, I drilled holes. What I'm using is just a, an inexpensive quarter inch line with 120 pound working strength on it. I figured that should be fine. I don't really think I'm going to drag more than 100 pounds with me on this. Um, but I wanted it to be fairly thick and, and easy to deal with while in the shop, but also outside. So what I did then was I drilled these holes in appropriate size. I think I used an 11 54ths bit and that gave me just enough room so that I could run the line up, go through these one inch rings. I put a bunch of steel one inch rings around here. Uh, in fact, I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, and eleven of them. I put a single back here on the back side. So what I did then was I ran the line up through the hole, or through the, the ring, back down, kind of like just sewing it into place, if you will, up and down and up and down. The sled came with these two holes up front where these rings are, and it had a polypropylene type rope on it, maybe eight feet, nine feet long, so that you were three or four feet in front of the sled. I also, while we're talking about the holes here, I drilled two smaller quarter inch holes here and I just created a handle up front. It's just got a double knot on it back behind so it won't pull up through. This isn't really designed to pull it through the sled or the snow rather, but more just so that I can manipulate it, move it around in the camp, load it up into the car. I did the same thing back here. I made a little bit larger one since it's on the tail end, which is probably um, where most of the weight and or height of the bulk will be. I'll try to balance out with the camping gear, but we'll show that video once it snows and we go out to use this. But anyway, again, this has just got some stopper knots down underneath. I can pull it down tight for storage, get it out of the way, and if I need a handle back here, and again, this is designed so that I can, you know, pick this up and put it into the car. So with these eight rings on the sides here, two up front and one in the middle, then I can take a piece of, oh, just paracord. I see a lot of folks using bungees out there. Uh, well, I think that's not such a bad idea. My only concern with bungees is once you get your load tied down on this, then those are actually able to give, which might make your load shift a little bit. So I'm going to go with paracord here just so that I can tie it off and keep it where it needs to be. And you know, you can just... Any kind of a simple knot, you could just tie a, a basic trucker's hitch in here, pull it. Now I can adjust the tension on the load when I tie it down, put a simple knot back here. Should hold it while we're traversing. And again, that would be just to hold the load in, but wanted to demonstrate that quick. So, now I will modify and probably have two separate lines so that I can go in either direction, fore and aft whatever the case may be. This particular sled has a lip on it. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see that. But right here on this lip, what I did in the front side, maybe I can set this up on the bench. So what I did was ran a continuous loop all the way around the external side because it's got this lip and it's about a one inch wide lip that goes all the way around. So as I was stitching that through, I started here in the center, went all the way around like I showed you, and then I'm just tying this off up here at the front. So I can adjust the tension on this line. I can do whatever is needed. If I wanted to pull these handle cords down, you know, I can always tuck them, tuck them back under the line, keep them, keep them under control, whatever I need to do. But my thought on this, and why I ran this line all the way around the ex exterior portion of this sled is so when I'm pulling on these two here and it draws up the tension, that tension will go all the way around the sled and this, these two attachment points to the, the sled poles won't, won't be bearing all of the weight. The weight will be short around the exterior of the sled that way it's just not pulling here, it's pulling the entire sled behind me. Don't know if this is going to work. I've never done this before. Um, so we're making this up as we go, and we'll ultimately see how everything works out. Now, how am I going to pull the sled? Well, what I've done was got a 10-foot piece 
of Schedule 80 PVC and then just some regular Schedule 40 end caps. And what I've done was I've run a line all the way through the center, up and back, tied an overhand knot here with a loop, goes to some carabiners, and then those carabiners, simply enough, will attach right here. So then with these poles being five feet long each, plus a little bit for the, the line that I've got attached here, when I'm traversing through the snow, it should not be catching on the back of my snowshoes. Um, everybody seems to think that five feet is, is, the, is the minimum and actually a good working length on that. So I'm going to give that a shot. Here's the other end. I just tied some simple knots into this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Yes, I've got a little slack in there. But that's okay because that just gives me that much more distance away from the sled when I've got the snowshoes on. I put the end caps on, drilled a hole in them. I'll show you this side here. Drilled a hole in the end, hoping you guys can see that. And just fed the line through it. Why did I put the caps on the end? Only because I wanted this to have a little bit more um, shoring, if you will, right around the end where the ends are. That way if the loads are sideways or you know it's twisting and, and putting torsion on it, this, even though it's schedule 80 and very thick, I just wanted extra support right here at these points. So that way my, my tubing won't crack or split or anything like that. If it does that, it's got to split this first. If it does that, we're probably in a world of hurt anyway. We're going to have to readjust. So now what we'll do is I think we'll go outside. It's Like I said, it's September. We're not yet into the, into the winter months. But I should be able to throw a bag in here and, you know, hook it up and pull it back behind. One other thing I want to mention. On this bag on Amazon. Oops. This is the Cake Cliffs. It's obviously a camouflaged bag, but this bag is water resistant. It's got that PVC material on the inside of this. I think this is 600 um, nylon bag here. Big zip right down the center. But this bag is 42 inches long. It is 20 inches tall and 20 inches wide. As you can see, fits nicely in the sled here. And I can put a lot of equipment in here. In fact, I've got that, my Explorer, Grand Teton Explorer 4000 backpack stuffed in here. And <laughs> the amount of extra room, I've got newspapers and some blankets in here. Just to see if I could stuff some, you know, things in here for today's video. What I'll do is I'll leave this in here, we'll strap it down, and we'll tow it. That backpack, probably 25 pounds. I probably have five pounds worth of filler in here. Yes, it's brand spanking new, just got it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll tie it down with the tie down straps. That way we've got a little bit of a load, like I said, maybe 25, 30 pounds to test it. We're going to pull it through the grass, and we're going to see what happens. Stay with me. Okay guys, now we're out in the grass. So, I've attached my poles. I did put a piece of paracord here in the center to keep the two poles together and keep them from slapping too much. Um, and what I'm gonna do is cross the poles. I've seen a lot of guys do this. They say it works very well when you're out on the trails. Um, and I think the biggest thing is, is with this outside left edge tied to the right hip, then when you go to make a turn, it's going to catch and pull on this sooner. That way I think the sled's going to track a little bit better and a little more naturally behind you. Now if I was just going off across one of these farm fields or something, I don't know that I would cross them. I might just use them parallel. And then hopefully then it would just track on the flatlands that way. Again, I'm new to this. Don't have a clue. We're going to find out once it snows. This is just a grand experiment and a fun thing to do on the weekend. So. I'm going to sling my Alice pack here um, because it's empty and uh, then I'll just see if I can't clip off on the, the frame for the pack here and we'll pull it around the backyard and show you what it looks like on grass anyway. Stay with me. Alright guys, got the sled hooked on, 
tied into the Alice pack down here. So now, I'm just gonna take off, walk across the yard, and we'll see how this thing tracks. Okay, proof and concept. It's done real nice. Stayed right behind me. I like this cross pull scenario. Seems to lead the sled and it turns a little bit better. Well, we've got it set up. Let's do this again. Okay guys, this really works darn good. Um, I'm surprised even in the grass, it's not a big deal to pull. Anyway, looking forward to the snow. Can't wait to try it for what it's meant for. And as soon as we get some, I'll put it on, put my snowshoes on, we'll drag it around, see what happens. We got a creek bed about, I don't know, a quarter mile, half mile from here. Pull along the sides, see how it tracks in the snow. We'll set up camp. We'll film the whole shooting match. Anyway, guys, remember, keep your heads up. Keep your eyes open. We'll see you outside.